Hey booktube, this is Sonia from An Enthusiastic Reader. How are you today? I am doing the book postscript 2018 tag that was created by Adam at Memento Mori. I know you all know who Adam is and how great his channel is and I really liked his prompts for this tag. I was trying to think of a way that I could sum up part of my 2018 reading. The first prompt is the longest book you read this year and the book that took you the longest to read. And so the longest book I read this year was Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell. And I read this before the Victober readathon. I just decided I wanted to read more Elizabeth Gaskell. I had read her um, biography of Charlotte Bronte, North and South. And so, I mean, I heard everyone raving about Wives and Daughters and so decided to pick that up. And then after I read that, I also read Mary Barton. So I'm getting a good intro to Elizabeth Gaskell's novels. I really liked Wives and Daughters. I love the characters. I thought uh, she was, you know, harsh on some of the characters and yet still compassionate, include, especially the stepmother. I don't remember any of the characters' names now besides Molly's. Um, and the book that took me the longest to finish was Troubles by J.G. Farrell. This is one of those New York Review uh, classics that I love to read. My sister recommended to me that I read all of Farrell's novels, and so I picked this one up. And it was the winner of the Lost Man Booker Prize, which means that in 2010, it was awarded to this book that was published in 1970. I'm gonna just read the first sentence from the back of the book. I don't really like it when I hear the whole thing, but I think this will give you a little taste of what it's about. 1919, after surviving the Great War, Major Brendan Archer makes his way to Ireland, hoping to discover whether he is indeed engaged to Angela Spencer, whose Anglo-Irish family owns the once aptly named Majestic Hotel. And he, so, I mean, the whole premise of this book is that he thinks he's engaged to this woman. They'd been corresponding, but it was vague. And um, he's also greatly affected by his experience in the war and then he gets to this what he thinks is going to be this resort hotel to rest up and it turns out that the hotel is falling apart and the family is falling apart and the political trouble between the Irish and the English is heating up and there's a lot of violence in the town and uh, it, so it's there's a lot to the book some of it is so funny and some of it is so sad uh, highly recommend this if you're looking for that type of book. Um, maybe sometime I'll do a longer video about it. Um, well worth the time. Prompt number two, a book you read in 2018 that was outside your comfort zone. I looked through my entire list of books and couldn't really find one that was a big outlier of the types of books I generally read. I read quite a few quite broadly, I think, but I don't read a lot of commercial fiction, so I'm going to say The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. It was one of the um, my book club picks, so someone chose it and I read it. Uh, I did have some problems with uh, the writing and the story, but I also was intrigued to find out what was going to happen to the, this main character, and it's set in Alaska. I'm sure you've heard about it. It's outside literary fiction that I generally read. Um, number three, how many books did you reread in 2018? I reread five books. And it, number four is your favorite reread in 2018. And this is kind of split between An American Wife by Curtis Sittenfeld and Old Filth by Jane Gardam. I talked a lot about my love for Old Filth in my booktube top tens tag, I believe. And I will leave a link to that down below. Uh, I, I can't say enough about that book. I, I just, it just grabbed me and will never let me go. And An American Wife, um, in a weird way, when H.W. Bush died, when George H.W. Bush died a couple of weeks ago, I felt closer to the Bush family because I'd read An American Wife. And we all know that that's pretty silly since it's a fictional account of Laura Bush's life. But I did feel some compassion and some warmth for that family, even though everything terrible. So that's what fiction will do to you, I guess. Number five, a book you read for the first time in 2018 that you look forward to rereading in the future. 
I had no trouble figuring out the answer to this question. It is I Am, I Am, I Am by Maggie O'Farrell. It's her memoir, 17 Brushes with Death. Each chapter, each essay in this um, memoir is, is wonderful. There was only one chapter in there that I felt I did not connect to very well, but I'll leave that to you to figure out which chapter that might have been. But all in all, that is one of my top picks for 2018, and I can't wait to reread it. Maybe the audiobook next time. Number six, favorite single short story or novella you read in 2018? Um, I don't remember any specific short story that really wowed me in 2018. Um, so I am picking a novella I just read last week called Strange Weather in Tokyo by Hiromi Karakami. And it's the story of a 30-ish, 35-ish year old woman who makes friends with a man who's twice her age. In fact, he used to be her teacher when she was in, I guess, high school. And they just start drinking beer together a lot, going to this bar and meeting each other. And it's the story of their relationship over a couple of years. It's weird and it's so understated and there's a lot of uh, cooking and chopping of vegetables, which some of you know is one of my things that really gets me in Japanese novels. I love it. And you won't be sorry if you read this if you like Japanese literature. That's all I'll say because I don't want to spoil it. Beautiful, beautiful novella. Number seven, Mass Appeal. A book you liked and would recommend to a wide variety of readers. I think a great book club pick um, for people would be Half a Lifelong Romance by Eileen Chang. This is a story about post-World War II, pre-cultural rev revolution, uh, the incredibly sad story of uh, a romance and what happens to the people in it and how important marriage and birth order is. Beautiful story. I think you probably heard Claire from Claire Reads Books talk about this, and that's where I heard about it, and she enticed me to read it, and I'm so glad she did. Specialized Appeal, a book you liked but would be hesitant to recommend to just anyone. This is a novella that I heard about from Sean the Book Maniac called Gachar Gochar by Vivek Shengbag. Um, it is uh, Bangladesh. He's a Bangladesh author, and it's the story of some very poor people in Bangladesh that suddenly become very wealthy, and the ramifications of this newly new, new influx of money and leisure that they didn't have before. Uh, that's another book I wouldn't want to spoil, but it's definitely worth your read. And then the last uh, tag question is reflect on your year as a bookish content creator goals met good bad memories favorite videos you made etc uh, I have only been doing booktube since the end of October so only a couple of months so um, I don't think I'm qualified to ruminate on my experience other than to say I'm very glad I did it and I'm in the phase where I'm still enthusiastic about it I like doing it I would like as a goal to get better about talking about specific books and doing more book reviews, even though I don't think people want to watch them. Um, and how to translate what I would have written. I, I can write, you know, well, if I sit down to write about something, but it's very hard for me to translate that, those thoughts into something that's presentable and coherent on camera. So I'd like to get better at that. I'd like to get better at making videos, uh, video editing, um, doing it quickly, getting the lighting correct, um, but those are just things I can work on over time. It's just made me happier to do them. So I love the people who comment on my videos. I am excited about seeing the comments and responding. So thank you to all the people who have supported me and been so nice and watched the videos. And I just look forward to, you know, carrying on through 2019. Number 10 is tag some fellow bookish content creators. I don't know who's been tagged in this. 
I see so many of these videos popping up in my feed. So I just say if you want to do it, you should do it. I'll leave all of the questions down below and the link to Adam's uh, original tag video below too. And we'll just let it go at that. Jump in, tag yourself. And thank you for watching and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye-bye.